Okay, final example. And here's one that will become very relevant way down the line when we're looking at things like the biology of aggression. So you've got these social primates, and in lots of social mammals, you've got this pattern, which is one of the genders picks up around puberty and moves to another group. It's to avoid inbreeding and everybody having six fingers and tails if you're a species that doesn't have a tail. And it's perfectly logical. And what you need is just some sort of pattern. Is it the females or the males of the species which disperse? And no one among the primates has ever found a good rule for which primate species have female exogamy or male exogamy, which gender leaves at puberty. But there's variability. In chimps, it's the females who leave at puberty. In gorillas, it's the females who leave at puberty. In baboons, macaques, a few other old world monkeys, it's the males who leave at puberty with a very critical implication. So you've got baboons. Baboons, you've got a troop, and you look at the adult males and adult females in there. The adult females grew up in that group. The adult males grew up someplace else and emigrated into here at puberty. In other words, among the adult females in this group, they're all relatives. Among the males, there's no relatives. Meanwhile, next door with the chimps, it's the females who have left at puberty. You look at the mature animals in a group, and it's the males who are there with all the relatives who have been there all their life, and the females who have no relatives. So asking a question, comparing baboons and chimps, which of those species has higher levels of male-male aggression within the group? Baboons, yeah, because they're all brothers and brothers at arms in the chimp group there, and none of the adult males and baboon troops are typically related to each other. Very high levels of intermale aggression intragroup. So which species on a certain level has put us to shame when it comes to the invention of warfare, of fighting between groups? Chimps, because you've got bunches of males who cooperate because they are relatives. And what you wind up seeing with chimps, and we will eventually get to this, is you see things that are now termed border patrols, where a bunch of males from a group will patrol the edge of their territory. If they encounter a male from the group over there, they will attack, they will kill him. As documented by Jane Goodall, taken to an extreme, the males of one group will eradicate another group. And if the rule is, I am killing this guy, we are killing this guy, not because we don't like the look on his face, but because he is a member of that group, this is the United Nations definition of genocide. Chimps have not only come up with organized warfare between groups, they have come up with a chimp version of genocide. What's the driving force on that? One of the truly scary things on this planet, which is when all the males living next door are getting along with each other. Because when they do, they suddenly start looking over at this side. Organized males driven by female exogamy and chimps is where the warfare pattern comes from.